Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus. And I want to take another moment in the time of our lives to see if I might be able to express something in some form, some fashion, some word, or some phrase that would enlighten me that I might be closer to that paradise that I seek. And perhaps you too. And within the past couple of months, ladies and gentlemen, I have had the experience of burying my daughter and she passed along from breast cancer and uh, she experienced stage four and then she was no more in physical but in spirit as far as I'm concerned as, li as alive as ever and just the other day I was engaged in the process of my father-in-law who also expired from uh, stage four cancer had to do with his kidneys and we see that people come and we see that people go and we know that our number is coming up we don't know when but it's coming and a lot of us are concerned about it will we be prepared and what's going to happen if anything is going to happen if the story we have been told is true did we benefit or not it is easy to sometimes think about certain things such as this, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you become older. Usually, when you're young, you will live forever in your mind. I've been there. I'm also now at that point where I know that just another day is a blessing. They all have been, but now I see it for what it really is. And so I think about heaven. I'm sure we all do. We've been primed to think about heaven place where we all say we want to go. What is there in heaven? Heaven, they say, is a fixture of love. And everything that is there represents love. We will see humans there. We will see males and females and fat males and slim males and same for the females. And we will see those who were considered uh, LGBT. We will see snakes and we'll see alligators. And we'll see everything that we have witnessed here on earth will be right there in heaven. And it will be a representation of love. It will be love, my friends, nothing else but love. And see, we find ourselves here on this earth today. The hope had been, but it is, that this is our school. This is where we learn how to love. You know, love is just not a magical thing. You have to learn. Once you learn how to love, you have to make a choice. Is it going to be love or is it going to be another? And when that decision is made over a period of time, then the separation is made. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, this is no game that's being played. And for those of you who've been playing it, stop it. Because it's getting down to the why. I was looking at television the other day and I saw back in the 60s when black people were fighting for representation through the vote. And I saw people with uniforms on representing military power and might by those who are in those uniforms who were white. Those who were in government positions of power to make decisions were white. And I saw these black people being abused in the system of a white. And they were trying to do something about it. And white said, not today. They brought out the hoses. They brought out the dogs. They brought out every possible thing that they could. They brought out the lynchings. They brought out the baseball bats. They brought out the bricks. They brought out the bottles. Trying to stop black people from being human. Well, somewhere down the line, over time, some were made ashamed, and the laws were changed a little bit, but the hearts were not. And so over a period of time, we got a chance to vote, but it didn't change the hearts, and we really never got into place. We've still been treated as second-class citizens. And then there came a time when we had the opportunity to make that change, and we didn't make that change. And so in the end, we got one of the most vicious, evil representations of the sadic satanic force as we have ever experienced right there in the white house and what it did it brought all those whose hearts were contaminated with all of that hatred and racism and bigotry and murder they came from under the tables they had been imprisoned by the law but now they were set free to go and they came out so ladies and gentlemen what's there to be gotten out of that that is to be understood as we here who live on this earth today we got here for a reason we are here to learn how to love. Because if we don't learn how to love, we're going to have to live a continuous life without love. We see what living here on this earth 
is light without love. Now, there might be a place that's more vicious than that. I don't know. I've heard some say that there is, but who would want to go there if there is? So I say if we are in a school, if we're at the university, if we are at that place where love is to be taught or hate resisted or taught, but each to determine, do we, do we graduate to heaven or do we graduate to hell? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you right now, by my understanding, we are on the education staff headed to hell. Why? But where, because I say, where is love? Where is love? Today, you got the power white, even got some black in there like black pepper. And they are infused with that, even in the system of government, with even within the police department, even within the military force. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to take back now that law which gave people of color a chance to vote. Now they're trying to take that back and take you back down the hole, which is an indication, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't straighten up and do the right thing now, I don't care what you think. You're going straight to hell. Why, why do I say that? Because we're living in it today. And I know if you don't make it better, it's going to get worse. So we don't even have to worry about going to hell. We'll be in it, feeling it every day. And don't think that those of you who are inflicting pain won't feel the pain. You will too. You ain't seen nothing yet. You'll feel it most of all. Because when you got nobody to abuse, then who you going to use? No, uh, no one else but yourselves. That's what you're doing. Anyway, you have a lot of training. Because you would have invested yourself in the lives of all those good people. And they're gone. And now ain't nobody here but you to invest on your own. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you some stuff. I hope it'll help to you. I hope it helps me. I hope I feel better when I get through talking to this that I'm telling you. I'm hoping it does for me what I'm hoping it will do for you. As I sit here thinking about, ladies and gentlemen, those of you in the church who are talking about God, I know you don't like the conversation I tell. Well, I didn't come to tell you about saving your soul. I came to tell you about living life and living life here as though you were in paradise. And I know the same thing that it would take to get you to heaven. It will be used right here. And if you're going there, the evidence of it will be right here. Why? The uh, societies that you're living in, wherever you are, will change. And if it doesn't change, then you will be killed in the process of doing everything you possibly can to make it change. Why? Because that's what love will do to you, ladies and gentlemen. Love doesn't try to stop you from voting. Love doesn't stop trying to take you getting education. Love doesn't try to stop you from having health care. Love doesn't try to rob you of every penny you get down. No, no, my friend, that's the hellish devil of the world that we're living in today. And that's the practice that we get in every day. That's the practice that we are fed every day of our lives. How to be evil, how to be bigots and haters and all these kinds of things. But we don't have to. But I'm telling you, it's a challenge. Because the, found, the foundation of love is within your own. You can't look for it in anybody else. Because you don't understand what it is if you don't have it in your own. So you got to have a heart. You got to be searching deep inside of yourself. What is love? And you, to find it, you can't see it out here. So you got to look someplace else in the spiritual realm. And I tell you, by evidence, it's there. When you find it, you can be set free step by step. You won't be automatic. It's a growing process even then. But if you want to grow, you got to use what you got. You got to do what you know. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the path to hell. But the opportunities to live life right here today. I want to tell you another little secret. When you make up your mind that you're going to do the right thing, that you're going to please God. What do I mean when I say please God? You're going to please yourself. Knowing that you're doing everything you possibly can to help everybody else. And nobody can say you cause them pain and suffering. And that's the God in you. Which has identified itself through your actions. And the world will look at you and say, wow, that's a peculiar person. Must be God. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think I will leave that with you today. And uh, I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time. In actuality, I think this was just a rambling session. But it was okay with me. Till next time, goodbye.